Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and look at this World War II concert poster, huh? Wow, original window card for Tommy Dorsey and his orchestra with Frank Sinatra in the band, but unfortunately not on the poster. <laughs> the spring of 1941, and from central New York State is this concert poster, and you know, for just a buck you could see Sinatra, Tommy Dorsey and the whole big band. Just a wonderful thing. Now this, of course, if you've seen my blog, is very standard, actually quite old and um, toned. Um, window card, 14 by 22 inches, very standard size with no printer's credit down at the bottom. And uh, this kind of toning, this was originally white. I'll show you a picture in a second of one that still is white that was stored away, but this toning comes from either direct sunlight or fluorescent lights. And it doesn't really hurt the look of a poster or its feel, you know, it gives a sort of an age pattern or something that's kind of neat, nice patina, whatever. Um, so I like it. It doesn't bother me nearly as much as other defects these old concert posters can have. Don't need to tell you, Tommy Dorsey, of course, was one half of the Dorsey brothers, and he split with his brother Jimmy in 1935, and Tommy became the more famous of the two. Give you a quick top to bottom on this one. I'll get it in toward the camera there. As you can see, it says George F. Johnson Pavilion in Johnson City, New York. That's sort of like a suburb of Binghamton in South Central New York State. Easter Monday, April 14th, real loud, plain and clear there. Dancing from 9 to 1, and admission only one dollar. Boy, you gotta love that. And then as soon as the color starts, that's the tour blank area that was used prolifically for years and years, and I'll show you a couple of variations. And uh, up there in the upper left corner it does say um, Management MCA, and then that logo does have in tiny letters Music Corporation of America. And then the sentimental gentleman in person, Tommy Dorsey, his trombone hold it still for you, and his orchestra. But what about this space right here? You know, look at it, it's blank. What's going on with that? Every Dorsey poster I've seen has this blank space, so it's my personal fantasy, and wouldn't it be nice for all of us? They could have put in Frankie's name there, right? Just put in a lead singer or two. Come on, that would have been so amazing to see Sinatra's name way down there. But of course, also vying for that space, say certainly in this 41 poster, would have been legendary drummer Buddy Rich, and other vocalists like Joe Stafford and Connie Haynes, both stars in their own right. So, you know, it's more simple just to have the band leader's name and you could use them for years. But it does draw the question, you know, when is a Sinatra concert poster not a Sinatra concert poster? Well, you know, it's um, collectors are divided about it. I tend to love the history anyway, but other people they just have no interest. If the, if the artist's name is not on the poster, they don't care, you know. Um, have the same dilemma with other big band situations like Billie Holiday with Artie Shaw, which I've blogged. Her names are not on the poster, but, you know, she sang. Um, and then it goes into the rock and roll era with, you know, Elvis Presley being a ghost opener, if you will, for Hank Snow or Bill Haley and his Comets. Uh, the Doors, you know, appearing with Simon and Garfunkel before they were famous, so they're not on the poster. Jimi Hendrix on several occasions, and I've blogged all of those I just mentioned. So, you know, I sort of came up with this term ghost artist on a concert poster where they played, but they're not mentioned. And um, as I said, collectors are divided. I'm a historian, so I still really like it, but a lot of people who just want the visuals just don't care. They, they would not consider this a Sinatra concert poster. So this Tommy Dorsey tour blank was used for a long time, both before and after Frank's tenure with the band and all during it, so it was used in different colors, which really is kind of fun for collectors. Um, in fact, this is 41 the previous summer. I'll show you one. It's the same layout and everything, but it is in green, as you can see. Let me get that reflection off there. Well, the main thing is, you can see, they used a green color instead of the red one to nice effect, and this is... Um, and also, interestingly, it does say under the Sentimental Gentleman, it does say of swing. So that's in 40, but not in 41 for some reason. So interestingly, this August 30th, 1940, Tommy Dorsey concert poster is the earliest instance I've ever seen where Sinatra was involved. Anything after January of 1940 for Dorsey would have Sinatra in the band, so this is the earliest. What's kind of funny is there's one for the very next night that has turned up as well, Saturday, August 31st. I've got a picture of that right here, and voila, back to red. So you see how this color thing was inconsistent. I'm just going to have to roll with that glare. Um, the color thing was inconsistent. There's, you know, they just had a bunch of tour blanks of different colors and used them whatever. So this is Saturday, August 31, uh, 75 miles away, Old Orchard Beach, Maine. A red poster, and of course also Sinatra's involvement. And then if we go two years hence, 
Look at another, another color yet turns up. Look at this orange. That's right, same poster, orange color. And this is um, spring of 1942 and back to Johnson City, New York, interestingly enough. But, you know, I don't know. Why should I show you a picture of an orange poster when I can show you a real orange poster? And that's right, hot diggity dog, I do have one here. Here's an orange Frank <laughs> Tommy Dorsey, not Frank, actually, I had to catch myself. Orange, you know, color used for this Tommy Dorsey. And um, this is the first poster I'm showing you without Frankie's involvement, because believe it or not, this dates from 1938. Uh, heavens, Frank was still a singing waiter in New Jersey when this was used. Um, and unfortunately, it's in really beat up condition, has really busy venue information. Um, but it does say, of swing, sentimental gentleman of swing, which went back and forth. And the orange is pretty catchy, too. And that's really nice. You know what I would like to find? If this is 38, I'd love to find this from 1939. Check this out. Harry James and his orchestra, big band concert poster, because it would have to be from June to December of 1939, because, yep, that's how Frankie started out with big bands, and Sinatra would be in the orchestra if you caught it from that time period, the second half of 1939. So it's kind of, kind of a fun thing for me to search for, you know. Okay, I'm going to close this out with a bonus poster, if I can unbury it here, from 1943, sticking with World War II, and check this baby out. This is a promotional poster from RCA Victor. Look at this. Definitely dates from 1943. A big cardboard easel back promo stand-up poster for Tommy Dorsey. And, of course, it'd be silly to say no Frank <laughs> involvement with this. But look at this easel back and everything. Nice, stiff, rigid cardboard. Really a nice piece. So, a lot of Dorsey today and a lot of Frankie and a lot of fun bringing it to you. A lot of pieces to show you here. So, thanks for bearing with. Thanks for enjoying it. And third thank you, of course, is for stopping by. Have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.